Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello. Whoa, that was loud. Welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me this week, we have Scarecrow. Yellow. We have Amy. Hello. And we have Stuart. Stuart. <laughs> Who is apparently MIA. Yeah, he's disappeared for some reason. And last but not least, we have Eugene, who may or may not be jumping in and out of the show. Hello. Um, so we'll be back at some point. Um, anyway, to start off this, the saddest episode of the Save Sci-Fi podcast, we would like to <sighs> regretfully inform. Yeah, I'll go with that. Um, you guys about? Oh, Stuart's back. Stuart, Sorry. have you found the people? No, I could not find the post. Ah. Oh. He's, he's still trying to hunt down who they were. Um, unfortunately, on the way home from Supernova last week, and we found this news out about 20 minutes after the last podcast ended, um, there was a horrific crash on the highway southbound, which killed two people that had been attending the expo, specifically exhibitors. Uh, we are unsure exactly who they were with. All we know is that they're in Artist Alley. And we are dedicating this episode to them and to all other sci-fi fans that have lost their lives going to and from cons and in all other sort of scenarios. So this is to you guys. And as such, in the theme of being the saddest podcast this week, we are going with the top five saddest moments in sci-fi. So... Who wants to kick off at number five? Daniel Jackson. He's multiple deaths. He's had too many. We can <laughs> we can probably make an entire list out of Daniel Daniel Jackson's deaths. We really could make an entire list out of Daniel Jackson's death. I thought we did. We will. We will. Anyway, you have a specific Daniel Jackson death. Um, his, um, wait, that's his son, when his son ascended. Did he die that time or not that time? Well, no, he didn't die that time. Technically, <laughs> technically he didn't die when he ascended. Ascension does not count as death. It should, but it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It's like becoming one with the force. Are you dead? Are you alive? Or are you a spooky ghost that could just perv on everybody? I'm a spooky ghost! I assume the spooky ghost because this picture I have of Darth Vader hiring the Ghostbusters to get rid of Obi-Wan <laughs> kind of proves that point. That wasn't, yeah. that wasn't fun, by the way, Anakin. Not fun at all. <laughs> it's funny, though. <laughs> anyway. That's what contractors got to love them. Oh, yeah. Since, since Amy can't decide... We're just going to put a broad statement out for one of the generic deaths of Daniel Jackson. Mine Stop. is probably one of the saddest moments from when I was growing up. I mean, while watching a show, I don't mean... You know, you know what I mean. Um, back in the early, ooh, mid, mid-90s, late 90s, something like that, there was an anime... Uh, released in Australia, and it was only Australia was the only country that actually played through the whole start to finish running, if I remember correctly. Um, and it was called Techno Man. And at the very end, the main character is so messed up that he's crippled in a chair. He's lost all of his memories and stuff like that. And the girl that he's been hitting on this whole time, who started off hating him, but eventually sort of fell for him. He's sort of like, it's okay, I'll stay with you. And you just see the camera pull back and this sunset and she's sort of like, I'll tell you who you are. And he's just sort of, yeah. 
It was very sad. That sort of moment sort of stuck with me. Why no Techno Man on DVD, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch that again, properly. Anyway. <laughs> I've got a copy of it, but the quality is ratchet. Yeah. I've got the same copy, and the quality is ratchet, and I don't want to watch that. I want to watch DVD quality. Proper quality, damn it. Hey, Stuart, right. what's your number five? Um, number five, it didn't actually happen in the show. Mm -hmm. It was more, um, it, it more popped up on, um, in New Who, but, uh, the death of the Brigadier. Ah. The, 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 prick, the picture they had, like, when yeah. I saw that picture, I, I just, I had a tear come down my eye, because I loved I love the Brigadier in old in old Doctor Who. Yeah. So that 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 was that was in memory of the actor that played him when because he yes. passed away yeah, just before the episode away. was filmed. Yeah. So they did that. If, they did that quite a bit in Stargate as well. When um, the she played Catherine when she died, they actually had her funeral. Yeah. Um, on the show when Hammond died, they explicitly mentioned it on the show. So. Yeah. yeah, although it didn't happen in the show, it was still just it's a sad it was a sad moment. Yeah, at least he got to live a long and fulfilling life, and got to save his daughter one last time. Unlike most companions, the brigadier was never a companion. I know he wasn't a companion, but he was effectively a, he was effectively a non-companion companion. He was a major part. Yeah. So, what about you, Scarecrow? What's your five? Uh, number five. I'm not sure if anyone will actually remember this show. But seven days, pilot episode when Frank si is prepping for his first jump back in time and sees the body of his child that was killed in a chemical attack. Oh, wow. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah. Gave me more incentive to pull off the jump. Yeah. And stop it, f and properly stop it from happening because if it continues as it was chemical explosive outside the white house drifts and kills his kid wow okay um yeah ouch eugene are you going to be joining us on the top five um actually you guys are naming some of the good ones that i remember so I i'm going to agree with most of what you're saying on the list so far all right sweet if you want to interject at any point feel free to jump in i, I will um, number four, I'm going to go with the Doctor saying goodbye to Rose at the end of season two. Where they're, is... they're standing on the beach, looking at each other, and you just, the Doctor's like, Rose Tyler, and then he just fades away, and she just sort of stares there like, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I have to disagree on this one. Yeah? Rose ain't dead. Well, I never said this was deaths. I said there were saddest moments. I never said deaths. So the doctor said goodbye, and it was an incredibly moving scene. Incredibly sad. Good point. <laughs> um. Number four. There's so many to choose from, it's so hard. Um. <laughs> When all the people start walking through the Stargate to go to Atlantis. Ah. At the start of um, Stargate Atlantis. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't well, know if, you if they're going to make it through or not. And if you want to cover sad points, what about the end of uh, Stargate Universe? Everybody's yeah. in yeah. stasis and Eli's just standing there on the observation deck. It's like... Uh, yeah, that was yeah. that was a very moving scene. Stuart, number uh, four. My number four. Uh, again, not ex not exactly a sad. Uh, I don't know if it was a sad point for anyone else, but for me, uh, when um, Picard got, got uh, turned into a Borg. Oh wow! Yeah, that's yeah. No, uh, no I don't know if it was a sad moment. For it was just like it was like to me like. It was a powerful sort of emotional. It was it's a it was a defining moment in Star Trek. Like yeah. you think of Picard as sort of the invincible captain, and then that happens. It's like I am looking oh, of Borg. Oh, okay. Um, crap. They they actually they actually went through with that. Huh. Okay. <laughs> We're all bone. Yeah. So, 
Scarecrow, number four. Uh, mine's also a Star Trek one, next gen as well. Yep. Uh, late season one, the death of Tasha Yar. Which one was she again? She was the first uh, security officer of the Enterprise before oh, Worf came in. The blonde Tasha, chick, yeah. short hair. Yeah. 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 Tasha Yar. Denise Crosby. Yeah. Yep. That one, I don't know why, brought a bit of a tear to my eye. Because you like blondes with short hair? No. <laughs> if we were going on that, it would have made me excruciatingly happy. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Number three. I think I'll kick it off with Stuart. Oh! Ooh. I um, don't really have enough. Oh! No, I know. Uh... This isn't, uh, forgive me, this isn't live action, but this, as a kid, this brought me to tears. The Iron Giant's final sacrifice. Oh, wow. Yeah. That brought, oh. I was crying my eyes out. That was quite brutal. I, I love, I love the lines, it's like, I am not a god, and Superman, like, ah, tearjerker. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll, give, I'll give you an old school animated tear jerker. Yeah. Original Transformers movie, The oh. Death of Optimus Prime. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's always a good one. Yeah. That ruined the movie and the show for me. <laughs> I didn't watch it after that. I couldn't stand Rodimus. Well... The funny thing is, later in the se season, it, uh, there was an episode of Transformers that actually gave me nightmares. Um, was the one where they find, effectively, zombie Optimus Prime. And he's sort of, the, the body of Optimus Prime is sort of brought back to life and it sort of wanders around for a bit. Before they fully revive him properly. And just that scene of him wandering around as effectively a zombie was just like, <sighs> just totally broke my brain. Gave me nightmares It's not weeks. hard. <laughs> So, Amy, what's your number three? Um, Fra Fraser, um... Fraser's Death? Yeah. I was watching that episode this morning, actually, while playing Ark. Yeah, that was definitely a, um... That, that moment when Warehouse 13 actually breached the SGC. Oh, same, same guy. But, yeah. If only, had, if only he had an artifact to bring her back. And, seriously, what is it with Stargate and the Doctors? <laughs> They're a good combination. They just they they killed Beckett, they killed um Fraser, they damn near damn near killed um the doctor from Stargate Universe whose name I cannot remember. She's not really a doctor, she was technically a nurse, which is probably why she just survived. T then started with T. They really don't like keeping their doctors alive. No, they don't. No, no, well they don't. come on, they kept um because the, well, the first episode they killed a doctor. But the first episode of SG One, a doctor dies, like the lead sort of surgery guy. So, second episode. Oh, no, technically it's the third ep because the, the, I know the, it's they the, did the a two-part two pilot. Yeah, I know. Technically, it's the third, but when you buy it on DVD, it's the first. Anyway, because for some reason they have the pilot episode is separate. Anyway, for me, my number three is the ascension of Daniel Jackson. That moment where he's talking to O'Neill in the gate room just before he, just before he dies, and he looks and he sort of tells Jake, "Look, maybe my path is this way," and sort of Jack comes back to the real world from ascended Daniel Place, wherever the hell that is, and tells Jacob to stop, and the music just rolls over, and it's just like, "Oh my God, I know that." Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> what about when his son, um, Jack, uh, Daniel Jackson's son or child descends with his mother? Yeah. Um, that was with Omar, and that wasn't sort of a big, too big of a thing. Like another really sad moment from <coughs> Stargate. Actually, no, I'll leave that. I'll leave that to the to the others list if we make it that far. Okay, moving on to number two for me, Spock's funeral. The death That's of Spock and Spock's funeral has to be on this list. It can't not be on this list. 
It's one of the most sort of well Sorry. known. Ow. So Amy broke it. What the hell is that noise? Signal interference from using a phone. Too close to the microphone. And she's gone. Problem solved. Amy will be back once she's finished on her phone call. Um, just temporarily threw out the airlock so we didn't get a, that god awful buzz anymore. So, it's, it's death of Spock and Spock's funeral is sort of iconic when it comes to sad moments in sci-fi. So, just, if you haven't seen it, Wrath of Khan. Seriously, watch it. Stuart, go. Uh, my number two, uh, number two for uh, saddest sci um saddest sci-fi moments is Terminator 2 Judgment Day when the tier 100 sacrifices his life and the final thumbs up as he dissolves into the molten steel. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Because that you could just end a Terminator right there. You didn't need to do all the other movies. Yeah, pretty much. I agree with that. And so if we really had a time machine that sent naked people back in time, I would really go back to there and make sure that no more Terminator movies were ever made. <laughs> <sighs> Just mostly because I want to prevent Genesis from ever happening. I'll get over it. God awful. God awful. Anyway. Don't you mean? Don't you mean salvation? No, oh, just, 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 yeah. just, I'm talking about the top of the pile of crap. It's, just, it's not my fault okay. that it's built on a large foundation of crap below it. Okay. Um, Scarecrow, number two. Well, this one's from a recent anime, so some people might get it, most probably won't. Space Battleship Yamato 2199. The moment when they've just gone through all the crap to try and save the planet and the system and the soul controlling the system gives uses its power to revive its dead or the its brother's dead girlfriend instead of the entire planet oh wow just wow it literally leaves you going oh shit now how there good. goes the planet. And there's a there's a further twist a cup uh, later on in the ep in that exact episode. So yeah, the planet still gets saved. So it's not yeah, but it's still that that moment where you think that it's just all gone to hell. Yeah. Yeah. All for a chick. Yeah. Wouldn't be the first guy to do that. It it wasn't a ch he didn't. The thing is, none of the living characters made the choice. The dead guy who was supposed to use his soul made the choice to ha to bring his brother happiness again. I guess the power bonus is stronger. Yep. In some cases. Yeah. Uh, Amy, are you back from your call? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's just college. It's fine. Um, number two. Um... <laughs> The doc uh, Dr. Weir. Dr. Weir? How she gets blown up in um, Atlantis. Um, she sacrifices herself. Yeah, the, after she's been struck by the beam and she's on the replicator planet and she freezes all the replicators, but in order to do that, ex she exposes herself to them. She, They take control of the nanites and effectively totally screw her. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. That was a big moment for her character. I'm really sad they killed her off. Well, didn't really kill her off as much as kill her off, clone her, bring her back as a replicator, <laughs> freeze her. Kill the clone at some point. So, yeah. So that's all the number two's done? Yep. Yep, number one for me is the end of Battlestar Galactica. Specifically when the music picks up and you see the ships flying off into the sun and you see everybody sort of saying goodbye and all that sort of stuff. No matter how many times I watch it, it makes me cry every time You see when you see them flying off towards the sun. So, yeah. Stuart, number one. I think this is kind of easy knowing who I am. The death of Obi-Wan Kenobi in, in A New Hope. <laughs> I was going to say the death of Darth Maul. <laughs> well, that's pretty sad, isn't it? Because he got turned into shite afterwards in the comics. 
but the, like once again, huge defining moment in, in Star Wars. Yeah. Like this, I mean, obviously others would argue that the whole "I am your father" is probably the most saddest one of the or um, Han getting turned into Carbonite. But for me, being a huge Obi Wan fan more, o- over anything and being the inspiration of of using Obi Wan for my cosplays, that hit me hard. Yeah. Like, because I remember watching it for the first time when I was three years old, and I screamed out "No!" at the same time Luke did as well. Wow. I full like I was like no, like no, don't kill him off. Uh, Amy, number one. Um, if they win, uh, it's actually from Sanctuary. Yeah, no surprise. <laughs> I will um, shoot you when they blow up Sanctuary. Oh, at the very end where they just, oh. where they destroy the Sanctuary and they have to and they move into Under Earth too. Yeah. 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 The End of Sanctuary is another one that really sort of messes with you in a really sort of trippy way. And that house was spectacular. I'd love to own a house like that. I'd hate the maintenance. Oh yeah, fuck that, but still. If it's, if it's made in a CG world, it doesn't matter. You don't need maintenance. Come on, think of the tank, the mermaid tank they had. Oh yeah. Sir. So. So yeah, Scarecrow, what's your number one? Uh, this one's actually from a game. Ooh. Oh, oh god, there's been so many. Oh man, yeah. End of Halo 4. Oh. I thought you were going for something good like the death of Johnson. <laughs> no. End of Halo 4, where the, where the chief basically has to say goodbye to Cortana. Yeah, okay, yeah, that is a pretty powerful moment. <laughs> and then we come to Halo 5. <laughs> yeah, so I want to keep And that's it. basically okay. just... Groin for Halo 5! Halo 5, Halo 5, Halo 5. Oh, the rage on that one is strong! Yeah. So, yeah. Now, the one I mentioned before for Stargate, which I wanted to leave for the honourable mentions list, and this is only because I was in one scene fairly early on, when um, Jack remembers what when Jack remembers Charlie when Jack remembers Charlie shooting himself yeah they could have used that as a constant beating stick for Jack but they let him grow past it yeah thankfully so I have one for the horrible mentions list yep hating questions and being involved in Star Wars <laughs> well I'm sorry I just I could not stand him well. I'll add a couple honorable mentions. Yep. yep. Um, the death of Kendricks in Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. Oh, oh, that, was, no. that, was, that was a toss up for me from number two. Oh, don't remind me of that. That was the only recorded death of a ranger in the, in in the American I, series. I, in the Japan series, there's been a whole bunch of deaths. Uh, uh, if well, I was going to use that, I would have used Sentai. But no, Kendricks is the only recorded death of a ranger in the American show. Correct. Every other, every no one else dies as a ranger. That's right. In the course of their ranger duties, I would. Some of them die outside of ranger duties, but not while they're active. Yeah. Yeah. I did like how they. I did like when they killed her that they um replaced her with the former astronomer. Her that death actually was. was kind of sad too in the previous season. It was, but, but, but she came back right away. Uh, they they killed astronomer, but they brought back Carone, which was the original personality. Right. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Any other honorable mentions? I think that's it for me. Yeah. No, I, I can't think of any others at this exact moment. Like mentioning video games definitely made me think of yeah the Johnson. Oh. Um, to take him out with a bang. Why? Why do they have to kill Johnson? It's Johnson. Because uh, someone had to die, and no one liked Miranda Keys that much. Yeah, his point. So, yeah, anyway, let's move on. Um, for the first time ever, a top five list has not taken an hour. 
<laughs> it was a sad one, though. Yeah, it was a very sad one. So we wanted to sort of move through it. Now, on a lighter note... Sorry, before we get to the lighter note, I'd like to uh, propose this. If, are you Let proposing us... to Amy? No. You should be proposing. <laughs> <laughs> I love if... she's flat up. She's like, not, not happening. <laughs> it, it wouldn't happen. That wouldn't happen on the podcast anyway, you twats. It's not like Stuart who proposed at Supernova. At Comic-Con. At Comic-Con. Just not us. Mm. Fine, no, at a con. Um, okay. I'd like to propose a minute's silence for those that we've lost from Supernova. Yeah, sounds good. I would have gone the extra hog and got the uh, Anzac Day... <laughs> Sound. story really hurt when I read about it on the way home. The way they described the supernova stuff scattered across the highway was just, yeah. Yeah, that wasn't cool. No. That truck I mean, of messed up. all the ways to go. Yeah. So, anyway. Anyway, let's move on to the lighter note. Pick this thing up at about the halfway point, slap it on the arse and make it happy. Yeehaw! <laughs> Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Donkey around. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um. What did we think of the Doctor Who finale? <laughs> Not sure. Uh, what? Uh, oh, I don't think it was that bad. I hate that it focused again too much on Clara. I thought the Doctor was gonna go on like a full rampage, but. Oh, no. just just get rid of that damn girl. Uh, you hear those two proposed a spin-off series following the diner through the universe? Please. Oh, go no. go dinerify, please. <laughs> just go dinerify now. <laughs> I, I could live I could be happy with a Shilda. Like Maisie Williams is an incredible actress for her age. Oh yeah. She she's going to grow up and just win everything. She's just going to grow up and be one of those actresses that's just going to define a generation. Yeah. I just love the fact that they have now a flying diner. I have no problem with the shield or the diner for that matter. The diner was a nice touch. I mean, what <laughs> the is diner it with was it? funny. What is it with Doctor Who stealing TARDISes and breaking the chameleon circuits? <laughs> it's what they do. On the plus side, that diner in Car the, the diner they filmed in is actually a diner in Cardiff, right near where the Torchwood entry is. Yeah. Um, I've been there. They've got some fucking spectacular food. They really do. <laughs> I was like, I love the screwdriver. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that it is... It's like a lightsaber screwdriver. It looks really mm -hmm. trippy. I love the... I love how um, there's a video um, that came out after the, um, the finale of how, of um, Capaldi describing it. Yeah. And uh, it says it looks like the TARDIS. And it's like, it when it lights up and stuff, it do, it moves... The lights in, in the middle move around like the TARDIS does. Yeah, nice. You really like, think they'd learn... Sorry. You really think they'd learn to take the break off? <laughs> <laughs> He likes the sound. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah. Overall, I don't think it was. I don't think it was a bad episode. I don't think it was a good episode overall. Um, I do kind of wish Clara had stayed dead. Just that said, I stood with her original way she exited last se end of last season. I still stand by that. But at the very least, um, at the very least, it's going to be cool. And I look forward oh. to the Christmas special in a couple of weeks. Oh yeah, that looks really good, actually. Yeah. So. This scary Christmas is a couple of weeks away. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for it to be over. One of the ladies at my work is so Christmas. Like, seriously. She is so Christmas that 
if we cut her, it would probably be green and red. <laughs> it's probably sparkly. And looks something similar to tinsel. <laughs> I have three of them. <laughs> I still haven't put my tree up yet. She comes into work almost an hour early. Okay, okay, we're off cover track. her pick machine in Christmas tinsel. <laughs> it's like, no, no, it's too much Christmas. It burns. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like, uh... Okay. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if you guys liked it, but I, I loved um, that they show the the uh, the generation from male to female. Yeah, that was that was that was cool. It's like, oh, so this is actually a thing. Yeah. More hints towards female doctor in the future. Yeah. I like the fact that I still don't like the idea of a female doctor. I did like that was one part I did like in the episode. It's like, you just killed that guy. That's not you. Like, we're time lords. Why do you think I asked him about regenerations? Yeah. <laughs> this is like this is like having a cold. Yeah, it's like having a man flu. <laughs> That's to kill us. Uh, and then it's like having the man flu it gets up as a female. Uh, uh, crap. Uh, <laughs> it's like how do you deal with being a male with, with having to deal with all that ego? It's like well. <laughs> so, so gender bending time lords confirmed. The only okay, consistent one is the Doctor. Yeah. There. Oh god, picture this. One regeneration, it's your mum. Next regeneration, it's your brother. Well, so how do you tell... How do you talk to the person that gave birth to you after the next regeneration they come out male? I don't even want to consider that sentence. Don't do <laughs> <laughs> Brain be broken. I think that's an incipient brain hemorrhage. <laughs> okay, next. Anyway. Yeah, um, overall, I actually quite liked that episode. I did. It was good. The whole um, explaining what the the dial thing was he was in last episode. The confession dial, that's it. Um, the torture and, chamber. And how they use it to try and get information out of people and sort of make their minds go... Rest at, like at ease before they upload it in, into the Time Lords Matrix. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, overall, I, I just overall I just I really hated the Clara as aspect of the whole episode. Yeah, just running around with her undead. Just, uh, we don't need a zombie Clara. Apparently, we do. If you get killed off, you should be left dead. Uh, oh, yes. wait. Hey, the best part is classic control room's back. That's true. That was cool. Wait, I can't talk. We've had Daniel Jackson die and come back so many yeah. times. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, considering we could do the top oh, 20 God. deaths of Daniel Jackson, it's almost like a, twice a season he has to die. Oh, God. Can you imagine Jackson as a companion who just keeps getting killed off every episode <laughs> and he's coming back? <laughs> <laughs> That's all that season's going to be. <laughs> oh, that'll be messed up. Yeah. I just like it how it reached the point where they actually started making jokes about Daniel dying in season 7 <laughs> the episode where um, the first half of the episode where Janet dies um, they when they discover that ancient city that they're in the ruins Oh yeah. and the guy goes oh my god um, Daniel's going to die when he sees this and the response was again <laughs> I think I remember something about that <laughs> It's a pretty good episode. It's got Adam Baldwin in it, so... It's an alright episode. Notice how it immediately dropped in ranking as soon as I remembered he was in it. <laughs> um, Build anyway. a bridge. Anyway, I think it's time for Eugene to do the model report. Okay, well, this week's model report, we're going to cover the... Bat because they just dropped the new Batman Superman and trailer I thought I might as well cover the Mobius models uh, and their Batman line. Sounds good. We'll break down the trailer as soon as you're finished. Okay. Well Mobius models has been doing models for Batman and uh, Dark Knight right? and they've done several kits from these. Yeah. Th they did the Batpod 
they did the tumbler and then they did a set of figures all in 125th scale. Uh, the tumbler is a very impressive kit. When you compare it to any other 125th scale model kit, it's like you're pulling sprue after sprue after sprue of parts out of this box. Nice. It, it is impressive. The, the bat pod is also super detailed. Then they had a set of two Batman figures that were available. One of him just standing and then one of him to ride the bat pod. Then they had a set of two um, uh, figures that were available at the San Diego Comic Con. They had Batman and then the Heath Ledger Joker. The word is that this particular set, they ran into some issues trying to get it produced sooner. So it was ended up being released for Comic-Con where they were allowed to do a limited run of them. And here's the fun part. That kit originally sold for about 10 bucks, and even hobby stores such as mine we were able to get it at that cost. But there's now places on eBay that are gouging people up to 60 bucks for two little 125th scale figures. Yeah, if you yeah. price really gouging is crazy. Yeah, what I'm what I'm doing with mine is I'm selling the set of 125th scale for $85 and when you break it down it works out to about 15 to 17 dollars I'm selling those two for because I didn't get a break on them I had to pay the full price plus shipping yeah. Yeah. the last two kits that that Mobius has done is a 118th scale bat pod with the Catwoman figure which it's bigger than the rest it's a nice but a nicely detailed kit. And then the last one is the one they have coming from Batman vs. Superman, and it's the new Batmobile. I've uh, linked to two photos of it, and yeah, that looks like an impressive Batmobile. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The pictures are already up on our, our Save Sci-Fi podcast page, and... The model reports brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. Sweet, sweet. So we're going to sit so down. There's a, the, the, the new trailer that dropped that he mentioned at the start of this was three minutes long, and we're going to break it down right about now. So, uh, Stuart, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, at so it starts off at um, a party. I don't know if it's at Wayne Manor or, or somewhere else. Yeah. Well, but it's, I'm pretty uh, sure it's somewhere else. Consider Bruce Wayne is turning up. I very highly doubt it's at Wayne Manor. Well, there's been parties... He's had parties at Wayne Manor before, and then he turns up late, so... so it appears to be some form of art gallery. Yeah, it probably is. And also, why is he driving his own car? Where's Alfred? Probably dead uh, at this Bruce point. Does, no, Bruce does drive his own car. Yeah, he's been known to drive his own car. True. I guess because I've been watching Alfred so much doesn't the do... Op- Everything for him. He's not a complete useless person. I guess because I've been watching the old Batman TV series where Alfred drives him around. I've been so used to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, then it shows some a quick shots of some of what Batman's been doing. Sort of hunting down people, tying them up. <laughs> I love them. Actually, I've got to mention the uh, the bat smirk. The uh, the smirk. Yeah. The Bruce Wayne smirk. I'm like, oh, he's got that smirk. He's got that smirk down pat. So yeah. So the Go- the Gotham Free Post has a runs a full article on the whole Batman thing, and you actually see that Batman has branded the criminal. Yeah, that, which I'll be like, ouch. Yeah. Even I don't remember him being that vi- that um violent in the Dark Knight. Yeah. And then you see Superman casually saving the crew of a rocket. Well, we don't know if there's someone in there or not, but it's definitely a rocket. We we'll, we speculate there's people in there. Judging by what the writing on it, it's Russian. Yeah. So. Also, careful, Zack. Careful, Zack Snyder. You almost got some color in there. Yeah. Um, then you've got Superman's logo I've been on it. Watching, watching the, I've been watching the um the everything wrong with Batman vs Superman yeah. trailer too too much. Oh yeah. 
Um, then you've got the Superman sign on a house. Does that mean the other people that are also drowning in the immediate area won't get saved by him? <laughs> yeah, because the others don't. And he's just sort of casually hovering also, in I the just... sky above them as opposed to actually helping them. I also love the fact that there's just this one, uh, there's four pe- there's four houses of people and then there's one random house with no one on it. Did they drown already? Yeah. Because he was just standing there doing the whole god thing in the sky for too long. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, <laughs> joke's on you, Batman. Painted on his, painted on his fucking... Oh, uh, <coughs> yeah. I still think that's Jason's Todd's outfit. Yeah. It, 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 it jokes, to, it like, it looks too much heavily like it as well. Yeah. For those who don't know, Jason Todd was the second Robin after Dick Grayson and was killed by a Joker. Yeah. And then later brought back to life in the Lazarus Pit and is now known as the Red Hood. Yeah. Um, then we see Lex Luthor with hair, which is sort of an interesting twist. Oh, well, it's, it's a young Lex. Young Lex actually had hair yeah. no, before, he no. got, before he got bald. Depends on which version of Lex you're talking about, because origi- if you're following the storylines, Lex had hair. If you follow Smallville, he's been bald as a bat since he was born. Yeah. No, I think it was about eight when he lost all his hair. Yeah. Um, then you've got Superman entering his tunnel of some description, surrounded by soldiers with Superman logos on them. Oh, yeah. When, when, um, he bowing. To- bowing to him. And Yo, then we I'd... see Superman rocking up at a protest. Let me have a look at some of those signs. Um, oh, protest. Earth belongs to humans. <laughs> There's what, aliens actually, some... doom nations. God There's... hate aliens. Superman yeah, that, I was like, aliens. I wonder who the God hate aliens sign is yeah. from. West Barrow Baptist, we're looking at you. <laughs> Leave them alone. They've been surprisingly quiet for a little while. Maybe they finally shut up. <laughs> oh, no, I saw a picture on the web of... Of someone driving by Westboro, and there was they had a, their message said, "The Bible trumps the Constitution." And the bright spark who'd taken the photo wrote underneath it, "That's how terrorists are made." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, moving um, along. Anyway, moving along, you see Superman in what looks like a, a congressional hearing of some description. Yeah, I I, I love the fact that uh, when it comes to superheroes. They always seem to be in a courtroom somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, to pay all their fines of demolishing buildings. And then we see. Oh come the, on! The only one who doesn't have to worry about that is Tony. We see a bit of backstory to the whole what motivated Batman. We see Batman facing off against Superman. Oh, and you the see Batman in bat suit. And the Batman in chains, and Superman ripping his uh, mask off. Yep. Um. See Batman chasing after Superman in, with his jet, which is... The Batwing. With the Batwing, which is fucking spectacular. <laughs> Actually, I want to uh, make mention of this, uh, just due to the fact of the end of the movie, at uh, the end of the trailer when they showed Batman with a gun. He has machine guns on the Batwing. Deal with it. Yeah. And then we've got some shots of, um, see the whole grappling hook out of the way of the laser eyes, which is pretty cool. Once again, uh, one of... Uh, mentioned that that is actually of a comic um, a comic um, front page. It's a front page of a comic the, um, the Dark Knight Rises series. Yeah. All the Dark Knight Returns. Like, this is when Bruce is like, like, old man Bruce, and this is like where they got the idea from the the, um, the male suit from and stuff, is to it's basically the DC version of the Hulk Buster, except it's Superman Buster. Yeah. Lex and is playing with stuff he shouldn't be. Yeah. Lex got, got his hands on Zod. <coughs> oh, Doomsday. <laughs> Did some BS to him, turned him into Hulk Superman. Oh, oh, we missed an important, important um, scene, actually. You did? Yes. Uh, when, um, it, it's the power um, Bat, uh, Batman's fighting in the desert and the, and the guys are getting picked off by aliens. Yeah. Those aliens are Darkseid's minions. Oh. That, se- that sets up either Man of Steel 2 villain or Justice League villain. Yeah. For those who don't know, Darkseid is is Superman's ultimate baddie. Yeah. It, like, it actually takes Lex and Superman working together to try and defeat him. It doesn't happen. They can't yeah. kill him, basically. So, yeah. We then see um, Evil Hulk laser-eyeing the sh- crap out of um, Superman and Superman <laughs> getting saved by Wonder Woman, and then probably oh, no, it's Batman. It's Batman. 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 Batman.
Okay, anyway, I'm gonna play the last little bit because it's really, really funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she with you? She with you. I she was with you. I thought she was with you. And that is the arrival of Wonder Woman. So, <laughs> and as Stuart said it, a second later it was being said on the trailer. So, congratulations, Stuart. You've failed. Damn it, I was trying to overlap it. <laughs> so... Yeah. Also, that was probably, that's my best Batman you're gonna get. <laughs> just, and then, and then the final scene. Also, love, love the classic. I love the sword and the shield look. Yeah. Love that, that we're getting cool. the sword and the shield into this. Yeah. Well, the question remains: What is stronger, Wonder Woman's shield or Captain America's shield? <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, um, watching the um the everything wrong with uh Batman vs Superman trailer two, there was like. The guy was like, oh, I saw a little bit of vibrating, ju jumped over into DC. Yeah. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be surprising with what she wears. You think of it about her wristbands and that. Yeah. Yeah, her wristbands are hilarious. Yeah. And as I said, the, the so-called gun that Batman is holding at the end of the trailer is not a gun. It is a sticky grenade launcher. Yeah. I'm because sorry. that's better. I am sorry. Okay, would you? What do you expect him to do with Doomsday? Uses uses martial arts? I don't think that's gonna work somehow. I, I I think the only chance in hell they have of stopping Doomsday is if Superman tries to kamikaze him into empty space, thus taking him away from the sun, thus taking him away from the source of his energy, thus neutralizing him. Neutralizing both of them. Yeah, or he could just break his neck. Worked really thought, well last time. Probably it'll probably regenerate. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, because Doom. This isn't the that's not the final form. Doomsday. Doomsday grows and gets stronger, so he's going to get going to get uglier, basically. Oh yay! So, yeah. um, I honestly am not really looking forward to this. I no, would have loved to have seen the first trailer was better. Yeah, because it, it had because. Well, a lot more of the tie-ins to everything because we've seen the tie-ins and I was like yeah eh. but it's because it's the the it's coming out at about the same time as Captain America versus Iron Man so there's going to be a lot of parallels drawn and to be honest the Cap versus Iron Man trailer was way better than this one oh yeah so they haven't seemed to work which is really odd they seem haven't seemed to work out how to make a good movie well, Marvel see, they know movies, how to make a fantastic. DC crossover movies. DC knows how to make Batman movies. Credit where credit's due, DC does know how to make Batman movies. The problem is the Batman formula doesn't work with everything. That is why Marvel's doing so well. They're not using the same formula for all of their movies. They're giving each one their own specific individual tone. And that is why they work so well. You can't make a Batman Superman movie and then be confused as to why a like Batman themed Superman movie and then be confused why it doesn't do too well. I'm looking at you, Man of Steel. Because they've made like what, about three or four of them? Yeah. yeah. Superman's meant to be hopeful, it's meant to be a positive, it's not meant to be negative. And I'm just afraid that they've gone way too far down the negative channel again. It's quite likely. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Stuart, are you ready to do the news? Yep. Okay, well, I'm kicking you off the news for the first 10 seconds. Okay. Um, Lego has announced the first three of the Marvel kits they're making for next year. <laughs> one, is, one is... That leads into my first new story, actually. It does? Excellent. Um, one is Thanos in space, fighting Captain America, Iron Man, and somebody else in a spaceship thing. One is, I think that's, if I remember correctly, it's Red Skull underwater, with an underwater Iron Man and underwater Captain America. And the third one is I can't remember, but it's to do it ties in with Civil War. Actually, no, it wasn't. It wasn't an actual set. It was um, they announced that they're going to be doing about a half dozen sets for Civil War. Why is Captain so. America underwater? Reasons. Well, did you watch the end of the Captain America movie, the first one? What when he nearly drowned? Exactly. <laughs> we'll go with that. So, yeah, so if you're a fan of Lego and you like that stuff and you collect it, sort of like somebody who is. The host of the podcast sometimes a little bit does, kind of. <laughs> too much. A little too Way much. Way too much. Um, yeah, keep an eye for those. They're going to be good. Let's do it. Go. So, yeah, my first uh, um, 
story, we have a new LEGO video game. Oh joy. LEGO Avengers. Oh crap. <laughs> However, it is not just the Avengers movies. It is everything to do with Avengers. So it's it is the two Captain America movies, it is the Iron Man movies, it's the Thor movies, as well as the two Avengers movies. Oh, nice. So yeah, that was announced during the Video Game Awards last week. Okay. Well, they need to just throw shield in it too. Yeah. But yeah, I was always like, oh, Jody will like that. I should probably mention that on the news. Yeah. Also, I, I, just because just I want to poke some fun at, 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 at some few people, Splatoon won Best Shooter of the Year over Call of Duty, Destiny, and Halo 5. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just giving a moment of silence for all of my lost comrades, specifically Halo 5. Uh, Ninten- and people are saying Nintendo <laughs> are losing the war. Oh, Nintendo I don't think so. Nintendo is losing the war in every measurable way, with one exception. Splatoon. Yeah. <laughs> and that's because change. it's the most ridiculously insane game ever, and they're going to break it with by making 70 copies of it. <laughs> But yeah, I just wanted to do that just to poke some fun. Alright, back to serious news. Uh, this week are the mid-season finales for Flash and Arrow. I thought, ah, that, was, yeah. I thought that was last week. No, no, that was the crossover episode. This no, is that was the crossover. Which was spectacular. We're still yeah. on yes, the crossover. It, it hasn't ended yet. No, 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 this is two separate... These, these are not crossover episodes. The crossover has finished. They've done their two episodes. Yeah. There was a flash one, and then there was an arrow one. Ah. Yeah. They got released the same week, the day after each other. So yeah, um, uh, mid-season two flash finale, flash finale, has uh, Mark Hamill returning as Trickster. Ooh. So get to see crazy, crazy, crazy Mark Hamill come back. Well, explains why he went dark side. <laughs> hey, not Kylo Ren. Yes, he isn't. And the Arrow uh, mid-season finale is called D- uh, Dark Waters, and it has da- and it shows uh, there are trailers for their extended shows for both of these, and it shows Damien Dark has collected Team Arrow, or kidnapped, I should say, Team Arrow, and Oliver has to make a decision. And I think this is where they're going to kill off Felicity. Yeah, I think that's who the grave is. Yeah. But and that's going to have that's going to have repercussions. Oh, they yeah. both. They both look really intense and really, really good. So, I haven't said that about Aaron a while, but just looking at the trail, I'm like, oh god, this is really, this yeah. is like season one dark Arrow. Yeah, like he's got them trapped in gas and like poisonous gas chambers. So we'll we'll definitely be covering that next week if I remember. Yep. Because I think, uh, think most of the shows have their finale this week. Yeah, I think um, Agents of Shield as well. Is that mid-season finale as well? Yeah. Or is that next week? I'm not sure. It's um, either this week or next week. I'm yeah. Not... Either way, we'll do a sort of a finale, Run finale yeah. rundown. Um, this is a cool story. Uh, a Star Wars-themed movie theater opens in Nebraska. Oh, yeah. Finally a reason to go to Nebraska. <laughs> After all, it's Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the Alamo Drafthouse Cinema Chain has opened a Star Wars-themed movie, movie theater in Omaha, Nebraska. And it's awesome, like, it's got, like, a Death Star, it's got the Emperor's Seat, like, it's really, really... Yeah, it looks really, spectacular. Yeah, they've really well done. And Disney will shut it down in three, two, one... One, <laughs> and gone. <laughs> Alright, moving on to our next story. This is more of an Australian story? Yeah. Uh, but, but production has begun on uh, Wolf Creek, the Wolf Creek miniseries. Nice. So, uh, um, uh, uh, John Jarrett is uh, reprising his role as uh, Mick Taylor. Um, there's going to be uh, six um, one-hour episodes that will all debut same time in mid-2016 exclusively on Stan. Nice. So, just wanted to report, just had to keep a little Australian in here some, <laughs> every now and then. Every uh, now and then. <laughs> every now and then. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow have a tr- has a new trailer. Um, uh, it just shows um, nothing really, anything new from the 
trailer that was shown beforehand. Just so it's just a it's shorter and just so sort of shows that they can change their destiny and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and this. So um, I'm not sure if you guys heard of this news or not. Um, but last week um, uh, Chloe Grace Moretz landed the ro- the role of um Ariel in the live adaptation of The Little Mermaid. Wait, wait, back up. There's a live adaptation of The Little Mermaid? Yep. Why is that a thing? I don't know. Blame Universal. They're doing it. Uh, now this... That explains all. So this is... And this is interesting. This one is, is not based on the on the Disney animated film. This is based on the 1837 fairy tale. So we will not have a blonde head Ariel. She's going to have blonde hair. Wait, uh, wait. Sorry, back up. Did you just say we're not going to have a blonde head Ariel? She's going to have blonde hair. She's going to have blonde hair. Yes. I'm fired. I know. Ariel has red hair. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Why? What, they couldn't... Has, what, has Scarlett Johansson oh, 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 is asking oh, too yeah. much money? No, no, I have to report on this. I know this is probably fake, but I've just got to report on this just because it's pure, just because the internet kind of broke. <sighs> but uh, there was a leak on the Steam database... And one of the titles that was shown was Half-Life 3. Yeah, no. No, no. Just just cuz it bro- just cuz everyone was like, "Ah!" Oh yeah, no. This is big news. Um so we know how there's the Marvel Netflix shows. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago there was rumors flying that Iron Fist was going to be canned. Yeah. Uh it is now double confirmed that Iron Fist is ha- happening but has a showrunner Oh. Uh, Scott Buck, who served as um, EP on Dexter and producer on Six Feet Under, will take the reins of Iron Fist. Ooh, nice. And the, the description for Iron Fist, uh, go, for, uh, as is, and I quote, Returning to New York City after being missing for years, Daniel Rand fights against the criminal element corrupting New York City with his incredible kung fu mastery and ability to summon the awesome power of the fiery Iron Fist. Nice. So this is the more su- this is the most superhero out of the defenders. Yeah. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to the defenders. There's no de- no timelines be given on for the debut. Yeah. Since uh, as- season two is, n- is next year, and then Luke Cage <laughs> and is is one year later. Yeah, well, I would so- love to see all of the different IPs come together for Infinity Wars. That well, that's slowly awesome. what's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, so, um, not just uh, not just offhanded mentions either. I mean, I want the Inhumans from the TV show are fighting against, fighting alongside Captain America and all of them. Well, the Inhumans have their own movie coming out. So. I know, I know, but the Inhumans from the TV show <laughs> will not be in that movie. I can pretty much guarantee it. No, um, and quickly, Still, what? What time? What? Oh, I totally missed what just happened. He said time. What about time? Time to go. No, it isn't. Is it like 90 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> That's your time, you muppet. Yeah, and with the way Stuart goes with his news, it'll take another three minutes to get his next piece out. We're on the last one, and his uh, Marvel's Doctor go. Strange has a preview video released. Excellent. There. I'm okay. done. You happy now? <laughs> Mister? There is no time left. The host grabbed me watching the top down time. <laughs> Hey, you put the th- you put the thing up at according to my clock at nine fifty seven. It is now ten. That's you said four minutes, three minutes ago. I Hello, Stuart. A casual heads up. Yeah, which I was just about to do in the chat so that we don't broadcast that live on the podcast. <laughs> Hello, bye. Uh, <laughs> Have fun. See you guys. Uh, bye. I, I I never I never say we're the most professional podcast because I know we're not. I just but sometimes I like to at least try and pretend. Anyway, join us on facebook.com slash save sci fi, facebook.com slash save sci fi podcast, and for the love of God, keep a close eye on Garrison Seven. I can guarantee you something awesome is coming. Really, really cool. Next couple of days, hopefully. Assuming I can get down and help. Larry, I've done a few announcements. So um, there's some really spectacular stuff coming. We will catch you next time.
Bye. See Bye. you guys.